Well, the Mage Seeker game is right behind the corner and Riot Forge is definitely getting ready for it. On their YouTube channel they released two more videos. One that shows you how the base combat works and the second one teases the game's quest hub. Both videos are quite spoiler free so you can go and watch them. But besides that, Riot Forge continued the Katarina comic which serves as the prequel to the Mage Seeker game. So far we went through the issues 1 to 4 and now episodes 5 and 6 came out. And this time it is mostly focusing on Garen and Katarina. A little bit of their history before we jump into this. In the past, by which I mean literally 5 years ago, Katarina and Garen met in their stories. They fought, they both realized that neither of them can win and they kinda just walked away from each other. And back in Demacia, some soldiers speculated that Garen let her go because he was into her. This part of the story was later referenced by Ilawi's quotes, it was also referenced by Swain's quotes and after that it also appeared in Legends of Runeterra. But over the years as the different regions got fleshed out, Riot realized that this part of the story doesn't really fit in anymore. And so during the big Demacian update it was retconned. Simply said it was cut out. Of course all the quotes still remained in the game so Riot always teased that something was happening between them. But canonically it was as if the two never met in their lives. And as Katarina's comics kept rolling out it was confirmed that's because they actually never met. And episode 5 and 6 finally shows us how Garen and Katarina met for the first time. And it was revealed how their relationship was kickstarted. So now without further ado let's continue with the Katarina comic. Which not only serves as the prequel to the Mage Seeker game but which also has some really big lore drops for Garen and Katarina. Episode 5 starts where the previous issue ended. So if you haven't seen it, it might be a good idea to watch the previous video. In this scene Katarina assassinated King Jarvan III and she opened the only way out of the secret chamber, which happens to be the way that goes through the Dauntless Vanguard. As she opens the door and surprises everyone, naturally everyone gets worried about the king. So first she teases everyone by throwing the crown on the ground and then she violently throws the king at them. Of course in shock the soldiers try to catch the king, which gives Katarina the perfect opportunity to kill them all. Honestly this is a great way to show how powerful Katarina is without actually giving her any plot armor. If anything it shows you how smart she is. Anyway after this Katarina has a short moment where she pities all the soldiers. Partially it's because all of them were simply loyal to their country and to the king. Not too different from Noxians. After this she walks back into a secret room and she picks up her gear from a bag. Which looks very similar to the bag which she smuggled into the city in the last issue. I wonder if this is a cool detail purposefully left there. Anyway then she sneaks onto the roof and gets ready for the easy part. Escaping from a city that is in full chaos. And she even mentions that after this, after she gets to Noxus, she might have to assassinate Swain. Because as you may remember from the last issue, as her father told her, Swain likely sent her here to die. Because nobody expected she would actually be able to assassinate the king. Now back in the king's room we get Captain Jaredon appearing on the scene. And it is implied that the entire time this character is on Swain's side. And that he was a Noxian spy the entire time. Because not only is he surprised that Katarina pulled it off, but he also mentions that this is going to complicate everything. What's cool about this is that Jaredon previously appeared in Lux's comic. He was the guy who let Lux into the Mage Seeker compound. And it now makes sense why he never questioned what kind of books Lux was looking for. He wasn't just loyal to the Crown Guard family. He probably knew what was going on and he was sending information back to Noxus. Hence why Katarina mentioned that Swain knew that Lux was a very dangerous mage. 
Anyway, after this, we see Katarina wondering if Swain is actually corrupted. She then realized that the Masia started closing its gates because of all the chaos. And so she goes for plan B, which is when... Garen punches her. Great first impression. At the beginning of their encounter, Katarina mentions that she recognizes the Crown Guard crest, which should be this little badge. Now, normally it has an eagle on it, as was shown, for example, in the Warriors cinematic. And in Lux's comic, she also used this emblem to gain access to everything. But for the sake of simplicity of the comic art, here it looks like... something. It looks a little bit like the old Challenger emblem, though. Anyway, Garen gets ready with the Petricide Shackles, and Katarina says the line, You must be Garen which is likely a reference to Legends of Runeterra. And then it cuts to episode 6. Here it was revealed that Jaredan told Garen that Katarina would be around this area. Of course he didn't know that Katarina would actually be able to kill the king. So he only told Garen that she was here because she was trying to help Silas escape. Also, Garen thinks that Katarina is a mage. And she confirms she is not. This is not Katarina lying to Garen. It was confirmed by Riot that Katarina is really not a mage. That's why she never pulled off a shampoo or anything like that in this comic. So the abilities she has in the game are there just for gameplay. Anyway, then Garen asks about Silas. And Katarina throws him off by mentioning Lux. Which made Garen quite angry. As Katarina continued that Lux was actually a good person despite the fact that she was being hunted down. And she even mentioned that she radiated magic. Of course, Garen didn't respond to that. It's pretty obvious that Garen knows that Lux is a mage, but he would never admit it. Also, in her inner thoughts, Katarina hints that Garen should be able to win the fight. But as you may remember from Lux's comic, Garen was injured when Silas broke out, so now the fight was equal. The two keep fighting for a while before Katarina mentions that whoever Jaredan was, he lied to Garen. And all she knows about Silas is that Lux was trying to save him. She also admitted that she saved Lux's life and Captain Erika was her witness. Finally, Katarina adds that maybe Garen should go and protect his sister because surely there will be more soldiers trying to kill her. After which, the two get interrupted when the main palace explodes with magic. This is when the two realized they had better things to do than to fight each other. So they somewhat peacefully turned around and walked away from each other. Of course, Garen tried to ask for Katarina's name, but she didn't bother replying because they both knew she would probably be lying. After this, Garen's story continues back in the Lux comic, where he meets her in the sewers, he lets her escape and he learns that she is indeed a mage. But in this comic, the story continues with Katarina. With the gates closed, she looks to the raptors for escape. She ambushes one of the raptor riders, but she doesn't kill them because the raptors are only loyal to their owners. So instead, Katarina keeps them alive so she can escape. Which is when the rider gets shot down. And it was revealed that it was Jaredan yet again. And he did it with the words for Noxus. During her fall, you can see that the raptor broke one of Katarina's daggers before she face planted into the forest. And this is where episode 6 ends. To be fair, so far it really seems like this is the best comic leak ever got. The Z comic was stellar, but this one brought in another layer. Because this one is also setting up the Mage Seeker game. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is going to be one more round of comics before the game releases. And depending on what's going to happen to Katarina next, we may or may not find her in the game. And if she makes it there, maybe she's going to help Silas. Maybe she's going to meet with Lux again. Or maybe she is going to expand her story with Garen. But maybe this is also teasing the fact that the Mage Seeker game is going to dabble in the corrupted Noxian politics. Again, depending on what happens to Jaredan next, he may also appear in the game to continue his story there. Speaking of which, we should also mention one more thing. 
This comic implies that Geraldine is on Swain's side. But it is likely that LeBlanc is behind all of this. It is already likely that Marcus, Katarina's father, is controlled by LeBlanc. It kind of aligns with how LeBlanc behaves in the lore in general. Whenever someone disappears and everyone believes that they are dead, if they come back, it's usually LeBlanc. But it is also possible that Jaredin is getting orders from LeBlanc so that he would make Karina go against Swain. Notice how Jaredin never mentioned anything about Swain. Maybe that's why. He's just doing it for Noxus. We already know that LeBlanc does have some clones and spies among the Demacian nobles. At least, that's what we learned from the Garen novella. So now I wonder, will any of this also appear in the game? Regardless, the game is coming out in a week, and I can't wait. This will be quite a streaming week for me. So follow me on Twitch. Now. But that's about it for this comic. As I mentioned, it was definitely among the best League ever got. It worked as a separate story really well, but it is also setting up some really cool mysteries for a Riot Forge game. This is a stellar achievement. Which also goes for one very special performance in this comic. Like, yeah, facial expressions are really important for comics, especially during big story moments. But we have to point out the most emotional character in these comics. The Raptor. From the moment Katarina ambushed them, to the panic on their way out, to the point his owner died. This raptor deserves an award. 